Welcome back to Shades of San Diego. The San Diego Asian Film Festival features a documentary about a graffiti artist who's traveled all over the globe and has found himself in some hot water. I'd like to welcome the director of Dirty Hands, the Art and Crimes of David Cho, Harry Kim, to the show. Thank you so much for being here with us, Harry. Thanks for having me. So tell us who David Cho is, how you know him, and what intrigued you about him that made you make this film. When I first met Dave, it was, we were like 13, and you know, they have these like Korean-American camps, you know, like, you know, learn how to be more Korean. Right. And so we were out there, and everybody was just listening to this, like, smooth out on the ill chip beat, you know, like, R&B, you know, rap stuff. And uh, it was just me, Dave, his brother, and some other guy, and uh, we were the only, well, I met him because his brother was just blasting Led Zeppelin on top of his mountain yet long hair he like looked really you know like a man on top of a mountain top with a you know boom blaster you know, playing it <laughs> so I met him and then we were all just kind of uh kind of just immediately a bunch of outcasts we just hung out together mm -hmm. and uh but the guy had like like uh like a sense of style about it anyways you know mm -hmm. and uh, uh he had a trench coat back then uh, anyway so I've, I've known him since then and uh you know I decided I'd make like a 10 minute documentary about him about eight years ago uh, I was going about to film school. About him as a graffiti artist? Yeah, about him as a, just the graffiti artist aspect. Mm -hmm. So it was a very short 10-minute documentary. Um, what's happened since then is uh, this guy Johnny Granado shot, so, shot a lot of stuff of Dave who's been following him around up in uh, San Jose. And I decided to make a 30-minute piece, and that kind of grew because he ended up going to, going to jail, and then that just opened up a whole past of, of this guy. And so I decided oh, yeah. I'd have to explain what's going on. Exactly. I just interviewed anybody, everybody, and it ended up with uh, an eight-year documentary. <laughs> well, just to give you guys out there an, uh, an idea of who David is, here's a clip from Harry's film, Dirty Hands. You know, I, was, I wasn't a gangster. I didn't want to gangbang and this and that. I just like the art aspect of it. I'd be like writing Bible verses on the wall, like some your mama jokes on the wall. Like, I wasn't out there like you know, Chaka writing my name over and over again because I wanted to be known for writing my name, you know? Or I, I'm up this many times or this big. I just wanted to destroy shit. I just wanted to, like, make it funny. So because he um, ends up knocking a security guard out while he's in Tokyo, mm -hmm. he ends up in prison for three months, right? right. How, how did that change him and change your film in the end? Well, I'm, I mean, it was a very life-changing experience. I mean, three months, people have gone for longer, but the thing is, he was in solitary for a lot of that time, and, you know, a big part of the torture is not knowing what's going to happen when they're not telling you, like, oh, you've got this sentence. It's, uh, you know, don't know, you don't know for, you know, a whole 30 days or so. Um, and when he came out, he was just Jesus, I love Jesus, hallelujah. He every, even carved the cross on his chest and on his arms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Jesus and the two thieves that were next to him, so he wouldn't steal anymore. Um, so he uh, um, did that, and, and I'm like, well, this will just make no sense if I'm saying this is an artist, and boom, he's a Christian, you know? So, you know, I was like, well, I have to explain what happened here, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Um, and, you know, for better or worse, I mean, see how you see it he's lost that fervor for you know Jesus mania but uh, you know he's kind of gone back a lot back to his old ways tell so. me tell me about some of the adventures that you had with David while shooting this film oh boy some crazy times huh? yeah I never thought I'd be traveling to uh, the Congo or uh, you know hitchhiking across uh, the US in two different ways uh, south I mean west to east and south to north um, all the way up to Alaska, but uh, when yeah, I what mean, what happened in the Congo? You know, I ended up getting married. Um, <laughs> Dave ended up spray painting the whole place. Um, yeah, and uh, and the the, uh, the chief's wife, this very uh, corrupt chief of the village, his wife was like threatening to cut off one of our guide's arms off <laughs> with a machete. It was uh, it was a fun time. It really. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you made it back alive <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to tell us about the film. I didn't bring anything with me. No, it's good too. I can't wait to see it on the big screen. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us, well, Harry. Thank you, Jessica. Coming up, I talk with one of the stars of a film that grapples with an unexpected love between two women in South Africa during the 1950s. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Our next guest stars in a narrative film that will be featured in the San Diego Asian Film Festival about apartheid in South Africa, breaking tradition and a romantic connection between two women. I'd like to welcome one of the stars of The World Unseen, Sheetal Sheth. Thank you for being here Thank with us, Sheetal. Thank you for having me. So tell us about The World Unseen in your own words and what drew you to want to be involved in the film. I just think it's, well, it's a beautiful story in itself, universal in love and relationships and the times. Um, but to kind of put it a little kind of spin on it, it's just about two women who fall in love with the backdrop of 50s apartheid mm -hmm. South Africa and everything that kind of comes with that. And they're both just trying to find their own way and their own voice and find it, I think, stronger when they meet each other. Right, now here's a clip from the film that portrays the discrimination during mm -hmm. apartheid. Boss books. You know they have bosses. I want to see them, now. This is only a travel permit. Yes, sir. Where's your boss? But I don't have a boss, sir. I'm colored, not black. Like Her father was Dutch. Like mine. You understand, Jack? I'm not trying to be different. <laughs> what are you talking to these people for? You keep serving blacks and we'll kill the lot of them. Then you'll need to find new staff. We won't need any at this rate. You're not exactly good for business. Did you know much about apartheid and the issues back then? I mean, how was it to play a character and be con kind of consumed in I that know. period? It's well, you know, I knew a little bit about it um, as I did my research and I read a lot. And for me, playing a character like Amina, it was really important that I not only knew about it, but I felt it and felt everything that those people at that time were going through because I think for her especially, it's physically sickening for her mm -hmm. and so really it kind of clicked when I went to South Africa and we were shooting and I spent some time there and just talking to everyone and hearing their stories and everyday things that happen and still happens and the fact that I was an adult at the time that it was still happening really unnerved me and um, it gave me everything I needed to feed into what she was feeling. Right, right. What was your most valuable experience in making the film? I would have to say really it's just meeting the people down there I mean, it's a real gift to be able to go and live in a community for a period of time and not just kind of go on vacation and get yeah. to know the, the, the life and what they deal with and, and their stories and their families. And, you know, it's nice to know that those people are there kind of rooting for all of us and we're all there doing the same thing and trying to tell a story that can kind of mean something for everyone. How long were you in South Africa for? A little over two months. Mm -hmm. So you really yeah, got to was, know the I area. I mean, I wish I community. could have been there longer, but it really, you get to feel like you know the heart of it while you're down there and you're shooting something like this which is really a work of passion because you do a small movie and everyone really has to do it for the right reasons right. and you really want to tell this story right and with some honesty. What do you hope the audience gets out of this film? I think really when you see it there's something for everyone and you can relate to any character whichever it may be and if it just kind of gives you some perspective on living the truest life that you can that would be something because I think it's just finding the authenticity for of who you are. Right. Now as an Asian American actress mm -hmm. being in this industry do you feel like Asian Americans have made their mark yet or do you still feel like there's a long way to go? I think it's funny because I I think even talking about it saying I'm an Asian American actress is the problem. And I think that, Being pegged as that I think just people even saying that even for us, and I know we have to talk about it, but I, it would be nice if it was just I was an actress mm -hmm. working, and that when you see parts written, um, that they're just written for the best person. Now I get that that's idealistic, but at the end of the day, when I read a script and I see something and they're talking about an all-American girl, I think I can play that, and um, most people don't because <laughs> they have an idea of what all-American is. And so you have to kind of fight for it and say, well, listen, America is all of us and all right. of these colors and parts and diversity and so forth. And I think that um, if we can just get past even the, the, the words that we all use even in talking about it and just start kind of moving forward from it, I think it'll get better. But it's getting better every day. It's just we've got a long way to go. Right. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here with us, Sheetal, and sharing it. with us. Excited to see the film. I am. I'm excited for everyone to watch it. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, a documentary that highlights the earliest known feature film made by a Chinese American.